Hi, this time let's study about the basics of the dynamics. Um, the overall contents of this course has been composed by um, th three chapters. First, we are going to study the basics of dynamics because we have to model the human motion that involves the dynamics, equations of motion, etc. So that's what we are going to work on in the very beginning. And um, we are going to study about the inverse dynamics, a very, very popular skill that you're uh, you, you, you will be used for your biomechanics study to calculate what's going to be the joint force and torques when you um, that generated by muscle when you take an action. And also inverse kinematics is what we are going to study. And um, maybe uh, most of the students are interested in how they can model the uh, wa locomotion, the walking. So we are going to study how we can uh, formulate the equations of motion for the walking. Uh, the equations of motions are pretty much looks like this uh, for a simple, simple model, simple uh, uh, point mass, massless like the model. And we are going to study how we can obtain the solution, uh, obtain the solution. So, um, and then there are two different uh, game model. One is using the inverted pendulum and the other is using the spring. That's what I'm going to introduce here. And finally, for walking, you can actually uh, get the solutions even stable periodic solution without control. However, for other human motion like a balancing control, like a posture controls, etc., you need a control. So um, the last chapter, we are going to study how we can implement control discipline to understand the human motion that requires control. So most of the control, like a like a feedback control, the control. Um, are generated by the muscle activation could be uh, take the role as acti act, uh, actuator and also sensory feedback approaches will be also introduced okay to begin with let's start with the basics of dynamics so first uh, we're going to study the equations of motion and later inverse dynamics and inverse kinematics okay so do you know what is the difference between kinematics and kinetics yeah, the, the very important difference between the two is one use the, uh, I lose the cursor here. One is handling without forces and the other is handling the forces. Okay, so if the existence of the force or not is going to be difference between the kinematics and kinetics. So kinematics is only um, interested in the describing the motion itself, like position and its time derivative as velocity or speed and acceleration. So pretty much uh, the one that you have we have learned in calculus. So once you obtain the position, you just take the derivative to obtain the velocity. However, for the kinematic uh, for the kinetics, you are really uh, you want to know the relationship between the motion and the corresponding forces. So maybe the joint force, joint torques are gonna be the topic that you are interested in. Oops. But the thing is. Mostly, uh, when we are handling the kin kinetics or dynamics, uh, kinematics chapters precedes. That's because when we are basically in kinetics chapter, we are going to learn F equals MA, the dynamics. So F equals MA or torque equals I alpha term. But the thing is, uh, without knowing, so you should be really familiar with how you can uh, formulate the acceleration, linear acceleration or angular acceleration. So that's why most of the dynamics textbook precedes kinematics chapter ahead of kinetics chapter. So the kinematics for the human motions are pretty much the angle or the position of your body. Okay. So for example, when you walk, your arm moves. So we are interested in your arm position or the arm um, or upper limb angle, joint angle. Then um, there are two different ways we can define the uh, the angle like one is a segment angle the other is joint angle as you can see from this figure segment angles are referenced to the um, earth reference like a earth vertical or earth horizontal as opposed to that the joint angle is uh, defined from re respect to the other body segments so for example like elbow joint angle is our angle between the upper uh, forearm and the uh, lower uh, upper arm and the lower arm okay as opposed to the segment angle of the elbow with respect to vertical is this one. So mostly it's a lot easier to def uh, obtain the equations of motion using the segment angle, but uh, for the interpretation wise, joint angle is more intuitive, of course, right? Now that's the kinematics. 
And kinetics is are about how you your joint forces like a hip joint force or ankle joint force are applied and how those muscle forces are generating the torques like knee joint torque and ankle joint torque to um, generate that motion. So note that kinetics are handling the forces as opposed to kinematics which doesn't um, include, uh, doesn't um, count on the forces. Okay, so here I'm going to briefly review how you can formulate the rotational kinematics. So suppose that you want to describe the human motion as a point mass during walking, okay? So you set the, uh, when you set the global coordinate, the position of center of mass is going to be described by the distance from this uh, reference uh, origin to the point and the angle between them. So typical X and Y uh, position for the center of mass in using the polar coordinate is going to be L cosine theta and sine theta. So with that, you can obtain the what's going to be the velocity and what's going to be the acceleration by taking the derivative of this uh, position and the velocity, right? Now, suppose that you want to know what's going to be your wrist motion, okay? So to obtain the wrist motion, you should set the reference frame where? At the elbow, right? So from the elbow, there is a distance from the elbow reference uh, frame to the, uh, to the uh, wrist point, so the length L and the theta. Right. However, those elbow point is going to be defined from the shoulder point, which is from the uh, pelvis, knee and ankle and metatarsal joint. So your um, net uh, position for the ankle, uh, for, for the wrist is going to be the summation of all multiple segments position. OK, you can just do the summation. So when you calculate the velocity, even though it looks a little bit uh, complicated, uh, you can just sum them up. OK. So handling multiple joint um, kinematics from global coordinate is you just add them up. Now, there's another way you can describe it using the different coordinate, which is local coordinate the, or the body fixed coordinate, uh, which has been often used for the biomechanics area. So uh, the, the global coordinate, even though it's easy to handle, uh, it's not intuitive. Like your elbow angles with respect to the uh, earth vertical is going to be 45 degrees. Uh, compared to your elbow joint angle is going to be 120 degrees. Which one is more intuitive? Most, of course, the lighter one, right? So your um, there's another way you can set the reference frame at the um, relative concept. So suppose that you have a elbow a fixed joint uh, coordinate with the um, direction of the axis along with the uh, your body bone, okay? Which doesn't change, right? And the Y is going to be defined as perpendicular to the X. Then your um, uh, wrist position will be L comma zero. Okay. Now your if suppose that you moved your arm forward, and that's gonna be another um, uh, posture. And in that case, your um, reference uh, frame changes, right? Your X is now along with the uh, your elbow to the wrist, your bone, body bone, and another um, your later postures of position vector is also L comma zero. So when you take the derivative of the position to obtain the velocity, that's going to be um, L theta, L I vector. And if you do the apply the chain rule, that's going to be the L dot I plus L I dot. And note that your unit vector has changed it from here to here, right? So uh, compared to the global coordinate, your local coordinate could change and actually rotate with the acceleration. So your coordinate change over a small infinitesimal uh, um, displacement del d theta, or it's going to be your di is going to be magnitude of 1 multiplied by the d theta, because it's a unit vector. And the direction is perpendicular to the i in a counterclockwise direction, which is j. Similarly, your j dj is going to be a magnitude of d theta, and the direction is minus i. So the time derivative of unit vector exists. It's not going to be zero anymore for the local coordinate, which is di dt is going to be theta dot j and dj dt is going to be minus theta dot i. So that's what you can extend is going to be L theta dot j. Okay, for the local coordinate. Same for the acceleration. When you take the derivative of the uh, velocity, then you can take the derivative of theta double that term and also taken derivative of j dot which is minus theta dot i so finally you will end it up 
these two components for your acceleration in body fixed coordinate, the local coordinate. 